Okay, here is my analysis of 3M, and I'll be using the tips and notes that I took from reading Peter Lynch's One Up on Wall Street. So here is a, just a quick look at 3M. The past day, it was down, I'm sorry, it was up 0.65%. Uh, it's been down 5.5% for the week, 17% for the month you know, 13% for the six months, year to date, 25%, the one year, 23%, two years, 50%, and five years, 58%. So the stock's been beaten up pretty bad um, for five years. We look at the current price, $88.40 as of the making of this video. It has a market cap of $48.48 billion. The trailing, I think this goes off trailing 12 months, um, earnings per share are negative 2.82. The price to sales is 1.48. Has a dividend yield of 6.78%. And I don't really worry about the beta because I don't trade. I don't day trade or anything. But that's just a quick look at 3M. We can go to its profile here. So I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I'll just probably read the first sentence. 3M company is a technology company which manufactures industrial safety and consumer products. It operates through the following segments, safety and industrial, transportation and electronics, healthcare, consumer, and corporate and unallocated. And if you keep reading, it looks like it kind of breaks down what each segment does or the kind of products that um, each segment has like safety and industrial person consists of personal safety, adhesives, tapes, uh, transportation, electronics includes electronics, automotive, aerospace, the healthcare segment, which I think they're, um, they're planning a spinoff by the end of next year or this year, um, offers medical and surgical supplies. And then their consumer segment covers consumer healthcare, home care, home improvement, and so on and so forth. If we look down here, it says 3M was founded by Henry S. Bryan, Herman W. Cable, John Duan, William McGonnell, Gonagle, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, and J. Danley Budd in 1902 and is headquartered in St. Paul, Minnesota. They have 92,000 employees. Um, and the C current CEO is Michael F. Roman, and they got 552 million shares outstanding. So that's a little synopsis of 3M, their profile. Um, and now I'm going to go over my, um, my method of, of screening 3M. So here are my notes. Now, I don't think I said it in this video. Sorry, I already forgot, but, uh, this is going to be a three-part series, series just because it's going to take a while to go through all the notes that I have here. And so I don't want to make these videos too long, but let's get right into it. The first thing you want to do, or the first thing that I, I do, is look at the size of the company. And I'm going to be determining the size based on the revenues. Um, and once you figure the size out, then look at the peers. So for 3M, last year they did $34 billion in revenue. And if we look at their peers, uh, GE, General Electric, $77 billion, Honeywell, $36 billion, Donaher, Donaher, $30 billion, and MSA, $1.5 billion. Now, GE is, I don't know if it's um, that great of a comparison to 3M. The only thing that they got going for them that's similar is that they are both uh, like conglomerates. So if we pull up some of uh, GE's products... We see that they have products such as appliances like refrigerators, microwaves. Um, they got products in consumer electronics, energy. They even have a finance and business, or I'm sorry, finance, business, and consumer um, set of products, electrical distribution, aviation. We can see that they're you know kind of spread out all over the place, but not necessarily a direct comparison with 3M. 3M offers products through four different segments, which they've labeled as safety and industrial, transportation and electronics, healthcare and consumer. 
Now this is uh, straight from their 10K annual report. Uh, under the safety and industrial, they got products such as abrasives, automotive aftermarket, closure and masking, and the transportation and electronics. They have advanced materials, automotive and aerospace, commercial solutions. In their healthcare, they got information, uh, health information systems, medical solutions, oral care. And in their consumer, they have consumer health and safety, home care, home improvement, and stationery and office. And if you go down here, you can see um, some of the, they got more descriptions, but if you go down here, you can see some of the brands um, that they uh, that they offer through each segment. So for example, in if we go back up here in the safety and industrial segment, some of the brands offered through there are the 3M Cubitron, two abrasives, the Scotch Bright abrasives, and so on and so forth. So you can review the extensive list of brands that they have here for each segment. I won't go through all of them, but again, this is all public information. It's on their 10K. Going back to my notes, that was that was just to, to, to show you a comparison between uh, General Electric and 3M. Uh, you can go through that with these other companies and you can pick whatever companies you think are more comparable to uh, 3M but uh, compared to these you know it's not the biggest conglomerate um, and it's not the smallest by any means um, once you determine the size and you look at the peers the next thing you want to do is place it into one of six categories now I'm not gonna go over why all these are crossed off in this video because I uh, went over my entire notes in the previous video that I did I'll try and figure out how I can link it in this um, in this on the screen I'm not really tech savvy so I don't know how to do that but if, if anything I'll just put the link in the description or comments but you want to place it into one of six categories depending on you know the situation and me personally I put it in the turnaround category because I feel it's been uh, being up pretty good, um, you know, some of it is um, understandable, but I think it's overly, um, I think this, the sentiment around 3M is overly pessimistic, so that's why I put it in the turnaround category. So just briefly going over what a turnaround is, a turnaround is a company that's been battered, depressed, chapter 11. You know, it's a no-grower, a potential, a potential fatality. And uh, Peter Lynch in his book, he gives some examples such as there's a bail us out or else who would have thunk it, the little problem we didn't anticipate, a perfectly good company inside a bankrupt company, and a restructuring to maximize shareholder value. You know, if we come back here, you know, we clearly see it has been pretty depressed for the past five years. And I think on a long-term scale... It's down where it was over 10 years ago. You know, the, the stock price on January 1st of 2012 was at $89.21. So it's down pretty significantly since um, since then. I mean, it's back to the same levels uh, that it was over 10 years ago. So that's the category that I think it's in. I think it's in a turnaround. I think the business is still a quality business. I mean... You can judge for yourself, but I'm sure most of you have used 3M products in the past, and you can tell the difference in quality between products that, uh, that 3M offers as opposed to um, the off-brands. But continuing, uh, number three, we have the business has one or all of the following attributes. So these are some things that I thought um, applied to 3M. It has a dull, boring, or ridiculous name. It does something dull. There's something depressing about it it's a no growth industry people have to keep buying it it's a user of technology insiders are buying and the company's buying back shares so 3m isn't really a ridiculous name but i think it's somewhat dull or boring it's definitely not uh, flashy by any means um, it does something dull i mean they make tapes they make adhesives uh, window tint medical solutions it's you know nothing real flashy it's not something that you will see on the news um, you know a, a new product that 3m just came out with 
and then there's something depressing about it. If we pull up uh, some of the old articles, let me see if I can find some. Um, there was a lot of negative sentiment around the company, things such as, you know, these, um, these lawsuits might possibly uh, bankrupt the company. And so, you know, you see th articles like this, why 3M stock lost 12% in September. 3M stock descends towards an 11 year low as PFAS concerns. This one right here says ticking time bombs. Let's click on this one. So ticking time bombs, three ESG stocks to dump. I'm not really sure what ESG stands for. Um, three ESG stocks to dump before the damage is done. We have uh, this article says Starbucks, 3M. Litigation costs are threatening 3M's entire value proposition. Uh, GM is another one there. But there was plenty of articles. I mean, you can keep going down and you'll find plenty of articles that were um, ha that had negative sentiment towards 3M. And obviously those lawsuits that they that they uh, have been fighting are, you know, not uh, small amounts of money that we're talking that billions of dollars. So it's uh, that's definitely depressing about it. It's a no growth industry. Uh, if we look at the, the long uh, term uh, compounded annual growth rate, I think when I looked at it, it was something like 2.6%. So there's, I don't think there's much growth in tapes, adhesives, um, these, ele these electronic components that they make or that they um, uh, offer products in. There's not much growth. Um, so I think a lot of the growth or a lot of the uh, profits would come from cutting costs and creating new and innovative products. Uh, people have to keep buying it. So a lot of the stuff that they offer, I think people do have to keep buying it. Um, things such as the office supplies, even though that's not a, the biggest portion of their uh, their entire business portfolio, um, there, there's a there's a plethora of items that they offer, and if you go through them, uh, I think. Most of them are items that you keep buying, even if it's not um, something that has to be bought frequently. You still have to keep buying some of those products. It's a user of technology. So let's pull up uh, 3M's 10K again. Right here in their uh, general description of themselves, they state 3M is a diversified technology company with a global presence in the following businesses. So obviously 3M has to use technology to create uh, new and innovative products and some of the products that they offer would not be available had they not been users of technology so let's go back to the notes okay so the last two are insiders are buying and the business is buying back shares so if you just google 3m insider trading you can see there's a couple options let's just click here on nasdaq all right let's go down now here we see the insider activity. You can see the number of insider trades. So in the past three months, number of open, open market buys, three. In the past 12 months, 33. Number of sales in the last three months have been four. And then the past 12 months have been 23. And if we keep going down right here, we see the number of insider shares traded. In the past three months, the number of shares bought is 2,000. 69 and in the past 12 months it's 106,738 and you can see the number of shares sold so almost double the amount of shares sold uh, have been bought in the past 12 months okay so the last thing we got to look at is buying back shares so let's pull up 3m's 10k again so this is page 37 of 3m's uh 10k and i'm gonna highlight well i won't highlight but i'm gonna underline or circle right here what they say so 3m expects to continue returning cash to shareholders through dividends and share repurchases 
Now, that's what they're saying going forward, but let's take a look at their history and see if that's what they've been doing. So this website is macrotrends.net, and all this information is free. You don't have to pay for it, so I like using this site. Um, but if we look down here at uh, the year 2012, we see that 3M had, at that time, 703 million shares outstanding, and as of last year, they had 568 million. So from 10 years ago, the, the shares have been decreasing. And even since 2010, you see that they had 726 million shares outstanding. And now we're down to 568. So that's all for part one. Uh, this video has gone long enough. So let me know what you guys think so far. Let me know if you think it, the video should be shorter. Um, and then I'll try my best for the next ones to uh, maybe consolidate the information a little bit better. But I'll start working on those uh, next next parts as soon as I can and uh, hopefully push them out to you guys. But in the meantime, if you got any questions or if I made a mistake, uh, please let me know or feel free to give me your thoughts in the comments. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.